Now, a little earlier, I spoke to the former Labour MP, Luciana Berger, who resigned from the party in 2019 over anti-Semitism, and she rejoined this year after an invitation and apology from Keir Starmer. It's an emotional moment, of course, um, for Luciana. It's a difficult interview for her to do. She knows a lot of those communities involved. I did begin by asking her for her reaction to that Hamas terror attack. I mean, it's, it's, it's been very, very difficult to see the scenes of what's been happening in Israel since Saturday. Uh, I was there just a couple of months ago. I was on the southern border with Gaza. I was at a kibbutz community, Kafasa. Uh, and as of this morning, that community was still in a hostage situation. And I don't know if the people that I met and spent time with, whose shops I went to, whose homes I saw just a couple of months ago, I don't know who is still alive. It's extraordinarily difficult and the brutal and horrific scenes that we've seen of people killed in their homes, people dragged from their beds and taken hostage, taken over the border into Gaza, babies, children, pensioners. It doesn't bear thinking about it. And I was just appalled and shocked to see that the, the, the figures of, of the loss of life. It's been the, the greatest attack on the Jewish community in the wake of the end of the Holocaust. Um, it's really, really horrific scenes. It's like you say, um, I've actually found it really difficult to look at some of the stories that have been coming out. Um, little children missing, babies, like you say. Reports of 260 people murdered at a festival for peace. I mean, how have the last few days felt for you know, yourself, you know, someone who's Jewish, someone who's spent time in this community before? It's really hard. It's really hard to to know it's happened, let alone see the horrific, brutal scenes, to know that people I know and love are being called up and now having to, to be taken out of the reserve and now being serving in the army, uh, to know that people have been taken over 100 hostages. And there are, there are so many things that have been put on social media by the Hamas terrorists, the perpetrators of, of these horrific acts, that people won't have even seen because they are so brutal, we can't broadcast them on our television screens. Uh, a lot of it is on various social media outlets, and I'd urge people to have a look at how horrific and brutal it is and to see the scenes of people who'd gone to a peace, a peace festival, a peace music festival, that were reveling into the night, young people who'd saved their money up, who were looking so forward to just coming together and just enjoying music for peace seen them gunned down and to know that at least 260 bodies have been recovered from that from that event. We have seen some pro-Palestine protests, for example. We know that the police have even stepped up patrols to because they're worried about anti-Semitic attacks, even though of course it's the Jewish uh, people who were targeted in the first place here. How does that how's that felt like for you? It's really serious and whenever Events happen in the Middle East. Sadly, they do spill over onto the streets of our country and other countries too. Uh, I live in North London, just down the road from where I live last night. Uh, a kosher eatery that I go to for my takeaway was vandalised and graffiti was put in the bridge just above it. This is happening today in the UK. And do you, does it make you feel safe? Do you feel safe? I'm, I'm really concerned. I know there are many uh, people that are concerned. And there are, you know, we, we have in this country a formidable organisation called the Community Security Trust that monitors uh, anti-Jewish hatred and anti-Semitism and does everything possible to ensure that Jewish places of worship, Jewish schools are protected. My children go to Jewish schools and, and there's a lot of concern around the safety of uh, whether it's young Jewish people or people going about their, their Jewish way of life going to synagogues. It's a very serious concern. Um, and I just hope that people speak out about it, that people acknowledge that there can never be any justification for the sheer brutality that we've seen. This is the action of a terrorist organisation that since its creation in 1988 was, has been committed to the destruction of the state of Israel. And this goes far wider than just the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We saw scenes in the Iranian parliament of Iranian parliamentarians celebrating uh, these brutal and horrific attacks. We saw the Iranians launch fireworks uh, in support of and celebration of what had happened. And we understand that Iran has supported Hamas and Hezbollah that have attempted to attack Israel from the north. 
um, in the last uh, couple of days and, and no doubt uh, before that. So this is this goes far wider. This this speaks to uh, the issue of Iranian sponsored anti-Jewish hatred. Do you see the hand of Iran in this? Absolutely. You do? Absolutely. And, and, and why? Because one of the reasons that many analysts are saying is because Israel was on the cusp of normalizing relations with Saudi Arabia with the Abraham Accords. It was going to, it was you know, on the path to signing a deal. And this has been a, a Iran's uh, mechanism and way to try and frustrate that. Uh, so there are greater issues in Middle East politics at play here. That doesn't in any way detract from the brutal events that we have seen uh, unfold in Israel over the last few days. We've um, heard a lot from politicians in the last few days that Israel has a right to defend itself. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, we've had Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party. We've had the Shadow Foreign Secretary, David Lammy. We've heard it from the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, uh, make it very clear that there could be no equivocation in this. Uh, that what has happened has been horrific, brutal and wrong, and that in the wake of an attack, uh, Israel, like any other country, has a right to defend herself. I guess I'm just trying to work out what a right to defend itself looks like in yeah. practical terms. Um, there have been reports, for example, recently that uh, Israel bombed a hospital, Médecins Sans Frontières, doctors were their borders, saying after the escalation, uh, Israeli forces struck the enclaves in Gaza's Indonesian hospital and an ambulance in southern Gaza. One nurse killed, one ambulance driver killed, se several injured. Healthcare facilities can't become targets. I mean, I guess some people have the fear about what it means if Israel does defend itself and how far that is that's able to go. This is, this is an ugly situation. And who is who is suffering the most? It's innocent people on both sides, Israeli and Palestinian people. Israel as a country has lost the greatest number of people in one day in any day since the end of the Holocaust. Uh, Gaza is one of the most densely populated places in the world and to engage in combat in that area is incredibly difficult. I just want to put to you uh, Jeremy Corbyn's comments, who's been around conference. Um, he was asked if he would condemn the attacks by Hamas and he said, I don't support any attacks, therefore I criticise them all. And then he also went on to say the way to end the terrible situation in Israel and Palestine is to end the occupation of Palestine by Israel. And there will be some people at this conference who agree with him. Well, let's be very clear, Jerry Corbyn's not at this conference. Mm -hmm. He's at an alternative conference down the road in the community centre. He's not within the parameters or the confines mm -hmm. of the Labour Party. And he doesn't sit today as a Labour MP. And he's not going to be standing as a Labour candidate at the next general election. So. He is not in any way a representative of the Labour Party when he makes those remarks, and those remarks are wrong. This is not new remarks, this is not a surprise. Jeremy Corbyn is unable to call out Hamas for what it is. It's a terrorist organisation that has engaged itself in the most brutal and horrific of attacks in the last few days. And shame on Jeremy Corbyn for not calling it out for what it is.